Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hope everybody's having a good day today. Good morning, Angela. Good morning, Jimmy. Good morning, Brenda. Whew, kind of brisk out here this morning. Good morning, Sonia. Good to see you. Amelia, Sneeds Ferry. Good morning. Good morning, Laura. Y'all let me know where you're watching from and is it cold where you're at? It's pretty cold here this morning. Good morning, Thomas. Um, appreciate all you guys watching live and, and those that'll be watching replay later. Uh, it is beautiful, me. It is a beautiful place down here. Uh, it's peaceful. Peaceful. You get away from the world when you come down here. So uh, I just love being in the woods when I can be in the woods. That's where I feel the closest to God, when I'm in the woods with his word. Good morning, Amy. Good morning, Bubba. Good to see all you guys. Um, I want to talk to you about being blessed. Good morning, Chad. Hey, listen, God showed me something this morning. I've heard a lot of, well, not a lot, but I've heard some preachers that I really follow and listen to a lot. I've heard one in particular say that God will open things up in the scriptures that you've never seen before. And you may have read it a thousand times. And that's what happened to me this morning. Because some of you know, I've kind of been in a funk for two or three days and uh, just searching, you know, feeling dry, walking through the, 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 the desert, so to speak. We've all been there. But in the word of God, I just could not, I felt like there was just not enough material does that make any sense it's almost like you you feel like well what it, it sounds so arrogant to say it now but at the time i, I it was self-pity what else is there to preach lord if you know how and god just showed me this morning we, we don't even touch the, the the not even the surface of his word one word can build sermon after sermon after sermon if god illuminates and opens our eyes to the scriptures and that's what i want to read to you this morning for our devotion, Matthew, the fifth chapter. I want to read something to you, but before I read what he told me to share, this is something that hit me pretty hard this morning. Romans eleven thirty three says, Oh, the depth and the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways are past finding out. His, his riches are unsearchable. We can study and we can spend time with him, but we'll never come to that place where we have arrived. God's grace and mercy is so deep his love is so deep and so as as the scriptures say there's so the height and depth and width and breadth breadth of there we can't discover all of his love in this life and i just want to share that with you personally something personal i've been going through and that is a dry season but what's happened is god has pulled away or, or i don't even know that he's pulled away he has put me in a place where i would search the scriptures and so this morning is what I want to share with you in Matthew, the fifth chapter, starting in verse one. I want to read to you. We're in the Beatitudes this morning, and I want to read to you what the Lord has laid on my heart. And it still starts like this. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into the mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And I thought that I would be talking about the poor in spirit. So I started studying this morning, but God stopped me on that word blessed. Blessed. Do you need a blessing this morning? Are you seeking and searching for a blessing from God? We all want blessings. I don't care who you are. You want to be blessed by God. We all are seeking blessings. But here's something the Lord has showed me in this scripture, the word blessed. I want to talk about that just a little bit this morning because in the Old Testament, when we look at being blessed in the Psalms, where it says, blessed, the, the blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. We all want to prosper. We want to be blessed and we want to prosper. But I'm talking to you about the Old Testament right now. What does Psalms say? To be blessed, we had to have an attitude or some kind of action in service to God to receive that blessing. That's what he's saying. Blessed is the man that what? Walketh. It's an action. Blessed is the man that, that delights in the law of the Lord, meditates on it. That's an attitude. I'm meditating on God with my attitude. And all that's perfect and true in the word of God. But I'm getting ready to show you something deeper that the Lord revealed to me this morning. It says, blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord. That is an attitude that we need to have. All of us should fear God, not fear him with a, a fear that we uh, associate with being afraid of things of this world, but a reverent holy fear. We should fear God. Fear God's a healthy thing. It brings knowledge and wisdom and understanding. But what Jesus showed me is in this scripture, the word blessed. See, there's a difference between blessed 
and blessed. Blessed is when you do something, an act or an attitude to receive the blessings of God. But being blessed, hallelujah, blessed is a position in Christ, who we are. That's why it goes on to say the poor in the spirit, the meek, the mo those that mourn. And I want to I want to get into that, but I don't have time today because just one word, this one word that God shared with me this morning, we could preach the rest of the week on. Blessed. It's a new key. It's a New Testament concept. Jesus made a, a startling revelation when he said, blessed, blessed, because you're blessed now. Why? Because the kingdom of God is not coming. The kingdom of God is within you. You already have the blessings of God. You've already received all the goodness of God. And what is that? What does that word blessed mean? I can't pronounce it. I'm not even going to attempt it because this is not a comedy. But the bottom line says it's a spiritual joy, a satisfaction that lasts regardless of my condition. We say, well, I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. I'm highly favored. But how many times are we so caught up in what we see and what we feel and the external around us? But God says, no, that's not where you're blessed. That's not the blessed. The blessed are those that have the internal power, the kingdom of God that's within them. Jesus said the kingdom of God cometh not by observation. You can't see it. Neither shall they say low over here or low over there. For behold, behold, the kingdom of God is within. That's the strength. That's the blessedness. That's the blessing that we have as children of, children of God. As a believer, we know that supernatural joy. We know that supernatural healing. If you've ever been born again, then you know the healing that occurred in your spirit. You know how somebody, you were fractured, you were broken, you were, you were contrite, you were in, in rebellion against God and everything else, and you were just lost, lost to this world. But when God came, He healed you. He healed you mentally, spiritually, and you know what? God heals physically. He still heals physically, praise God. But we have to look at the internal again, not the external, because this world is all around us. But what did Jesus say? You're in the world, hallelujah, but you're not of the world. This ain't my home. I'm passing through wherever you're going today, going to work, what you got going on today. That's an external situation that you're going to face. But God's saying the external doesn't define who you are. Your blessings are already in you. Why? Because the kingdom of God walks with you wherever you go. You have the kingdom of the Most High God inside of us today if you're a child of God. The Bible says, for the joy of the Lord is my strength. What is the joy of the Lord? The blessed, the spiritual joy, the supernatural joy, the happiness, the being fortunate. We're fortunate. You say, I don't feel fortunate. My bills, I can't get my bills paid. I'm worried about Christmas. I don't know if I can afford what I, I want to... Some people say, you know, I don't even have nowhere to stay. I know many people that are homeless in a place in Fayetteville, a town near me. Are they fortunate? Let me tell you something. If you're born again, you're fortunate. If you're born again, the kingdom of God is within you. John came telling everybody, repent, repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. Why? Because when you repent and you turn to Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God comes to live within you. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? And then he goes on to say, what, what fellowship do you do idols in the temple of God have together? In other words, don't focus on the external, the idolatry of this world, money, power, position, favor of man, but seek the kingdom of God. Seek it first and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Hmm can't have it both ways you can't have it both ways you can't put your thought in your heart and seek blessings of god in this world see that's where this prosperity gospel has just ravaged people's lives because they tell you sow your seed god wants you to be rich god wants your promotion all he wants you to have your job promotion all that listen god does want to bless you financially physically but that's not the blessedness that he's talking about. That's not the true blessings of God. The kingdom of God within is what he wants you to understand. Because when that happens, when you have that inside of you, the kingdom of God, no matter what's going on around you, no matter how people look at your life and say, my God, your life is just torn all to pieces. I don't understand how they can go on. I don't get it. And you can say, I've got a peace beyond all understanding. And it's a peace that I can't explain to you. You just have to experience it for yourself. And that's when you go and tell them about Jesus Christ and how he saved you and the kingdom of God is within you. Jesus went on to talk about riches. He said, how hard is it for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven, to have that kingdom? 
It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. But all things are possible through God. But what was he saying? He was saying when you put all your focus and all your cares and your heart in worldly possessions and materialism, then you're blind. You can't see the kingdom of God. You can't see it because Jesus said that unless you're born again, John 3, 3, unless you're verily, verily, I say unto thee, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You can't see what I'm talking about. Somebody watching me today that's not saved is like, what the, what is wrong with that guy? Why is he out there in 20 degrees praising God and talking about this Lord? What is he talking about? Let me tell you what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a power that's within. I'm talking about something that's inside of my soul that burns like fire, that warms me out here in this coldness. I don't even feel cold anymore. I'm telling you right now, God's power is real. His presence is real. He's everlasting to everlasting. His love and His grace and His mercy and His kindness and the joy that you can have will be your strength in whatever your situation is, but you must come by the cross. You're not going to find it in this world. You're never going to find it in this world. Many people are seeking His blessings in carnal, carnally, looking for it. And God gave me this scripture to read to you this morning. And if I can get to it, I'm going to read it right quick. It's in Romans, the 8th chapter. And I want to read that to you. And my hands are froze, but I still feel warm. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. How many people in the church today are so carnal-minded, believing that if we're more like the world, the world will want more, and then we can build a big church, or, or we're carnal-minded in the things that we want personally. But God is saying, no, the kingdom of heaven is within. The, the joy that you need and they need is within. If they don't get the gospel, if they are looking carnally, they're never going to receive it, because first of all, you can't please God in the flesh. You must come in faith and come by the Spirit. They're seeking blindly. They can't see, just as I said in John 3, 3, or Jesus said, except a man be born again, he can't see the kingdom of God. You'll never see the blessings of God. You'll never see the blessedness of the Lord Jesus Christ unless you're born again. That's why when we preach the gospel, there's people that get saved. Their life is just flipped up, just changed. They're miraculously born again. But then there's people that just say, I don't want nothing to do with that, you freak. Are you crazy? I don't want nothing to do with you. I don't get that. You know why? Because you're blind. And unless the Holy Spirit of God illuminates that to you and shows you, you won't see it. You're searching for the blessings of God in materialism. You're looking for it in some preacher that tells you to sow your seed, some preacher that tells you your Rolex is in the mail, or some preacher that's telling you we need more materialism or we need to be like the culture of this world. And God is saying, no, no. The kingdom of heaven is within, and it's by my Holy Spirit. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. They're blind. And the only way they'll ever see is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Where do you find this satisfaction and these blessings that I'm talking about? How do you get it? Where are you going to find it? I posted a scripture this, this morning. He says, those that seek after me early shall find me. I found him this morning. I, I, can you tell? Somebody say, I can tell. I can tell because I'm telling you, I found God this morning, dried up, destitute, of, and spiritually dry, looking for something. I said, God, I need to do a devotion. I skipped Monday. I bailed on you Monday. I did one yesterday. I don't have enough. I don't have material. I can't come up with this. He goes, you're right. You can't. Well, I'm glad you finally get that. I'm glad you understand that it's not by your strength, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. I'm glad you understand finally your, your hard-headed self that it's not a position that you're looking for in this world, but it's a positional place that I have within you, and it's my spirit. And when you get close to me, and when you die to yourself, I can show you things in my word, in, the, in, in, in this life that you can't comprehend and you can't understand, but I can give you more in one word in my word to preach on than you'll ever need because his riches are unsearchable. His depths have no bottom. I thank him for that. He says, for the kingdom of God is not meat or drink. Listen to me. It's not meat and drink. It's not the physical that your blessings are going to come from. It's not meat or drink. That's two things we got to have. You got to have food. You got to have something to drink. You don't need a brand new car. 
You don't need nice clothes. You don't need a bunch of likes on Facebook. You don't need a bunch of shares. You don't need people to comment all the time on your post. But what you do need is something to live off of and that is to eat and drink. But get this, that's why Jesus told his disciples. <clears throat> they said, you need to eat. He says, I have meat to eat that you don't know nothing about. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't know about this meat. That's the kingdom. He says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. What was the joy? He was bringing the kingdom of God to me and you. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He was saying, I'm going to bring the kingdom. I, I'm enduring the cross, despising the shame. It's a joy because the kingdom of God is coming to mankind. Repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. Hallelujah. He says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in what? The Holy Ghost. Comment, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Let me tell you, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God that changes a man and makes him alive and new. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's my teacher, my instructor. He's, 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 he chastises me. He corrects me. He shows me where to go, where not to go. And when I don't listen to him, when I disobey him and I just fall off and go the wrong way, he doesn't say, ah, I'm done. I'm done. I don't want to talk to you no more. No, he says, all right, when you sit down, I'm going to be sitting right beside you. And we're going to talk this out. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. He wants to talk it out with me. Why? Not because he needs my instruction. Somebody comment, God doesn't need my instruction. God doesn't need my instruction. God doesn't need my sacrifice. God doesn't need my sacrifice. You know what God needs? My obedience. My obedience. I can do a lot. I can serve God at do things in the name of God, but if I'm not obedient to God, then what does it matter? Lord, help me. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and to he that seeketh findeth. To him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If you want the blessings of God, if you want someone you know to receive the blessings of God, then right where you're at, first of all, if it's you and you don't, you don't know Jesus Christ, turn from your sin. Repentance means turn and trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Bottom line, it's simple. It's simple. You repent, you repent of your sin. Lord, forgive me. I believe you died on a cross, Lord Jesus. I believe you rose again the third day. Put your faith in Jesus Christ, not in your paycheck, not in your 401k, not in your best friend, not in your wife, your mom, your dad, your husband, not in nothing but God and the kingdom of God come to live within you. And when you receive that, then you can be a blessing to someone else. How are you going to bless someone if you don't have it in you? You're not blessed. Think about that. In the Old Testament, they had to do things. They had to do actions and attitudes to receive the blessings of God. They had to, to, to do all these laws and walk a certain way. But Jesus says, no, not anymore. Because when I come from heaven, hallelujah, Emmanuel, God with us, God is in us. The kingdom of God is at hand. Then you'll be walking in my blessing. Doesn't matter what's happening around you. Doesn't matter you may have lost a loved one. You may Your wife may have left you. Your children have gone crazy and or on drugs, and all kind of messages I get, I feel you, I know, I hurt for you, I pray for you, I sense the agony and the depression and the anxiety and the stress, but the kingdom of God is at hand, it's within you, so you can still have peace, you can still have joy, not as the world gives you joy, but as God gives you joy. And that only comes by the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the living God that you receive when you're born again. If you know somebody that needs this message, you share it today. You share it because they need a blessing. They need to understand the difference between blessed and blessed. There's a big difference, y'all. I wish I'd have spent more time on that. There's a big difference between blessed and blessed. They're blessed. They're serving God. He's blessed. He's doing the right thing. He's blessed. God says, no. Blessed. Blessed because they're one of mine. As many as received me to them gave he the power to become the children of God. I receive Christ. I'm the blessed. Are you the blessed? Somebody comment. Are you the blessed? Do you understand what it means to be the blessed? Because the fullness of God, the blessings of God will never come through a paycheck or a material object or a possession. It is a position 
in Christ, seated in heavenly places. I can't even explain that. I quote that all the time, and I, I, God showed me this morning, I don't have a clue what I'm saying. I don't even understand what it means to be seated in heavenly places. Why? I've never been to heaven. I've experienced a touch of it by the Holy Ghost, by the Spirit of God, the kingdom of heaven's in me. But the Bible says, I has not seen we have not thought, we've not come up with what's the joys, what things God has made for us in heaven. We can't fathom it. But when we start focusing on heaven and the heavenly in us and start focusing on the, the kingdom of God is within me wherever I walk today, no matter how bad my life, my day may turn out bad today. Things may come against me. The kingdom of heaven's still in me. I still have joy. But you're going to lose that joy. You're going to lose that satisfaction. You're going to lose that happiness and comfort if you start seeking it for ex externally. I'm telling you now, I'm guilty. Don't seek it externally. Don't look for external things to give you joy. We all like nice things. We all want things. But God says, your true joy, the blessed, is the kingdom of heaven that's within you. Let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts today be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I could keep preaching, but I got to go. God bless you.